We already got a couple parts on Bo versus Holyfield, so let's look some more at one of the greatest fights of all time. If you want to go look at the other parts, go look at those parts before we get into this and then the process, hit the like button, the subscribe button, then the notification bell, let's get into it. If you're dealing with an opponent who has a great jab, Riddick Bo, you have to find ways to deal with that. And oftentimes that, that that's not just through defense, but through counters, right? So defense into offense. So you see him try to slip outside of the jab and he gets grazed in the process. Now they reset and he's expecting the jab. He had, he's been having to deal with that jab for five rounds, right? So he's been trying to time and he's had some success here and there. Here's one of his strategies. He tries the inside slip and tries the three to the body. And I learned as I was watching, I was like, and I didn't realize that at this moment, I'll talk about that later when I realized the three to the body or the three up top became very important for Evander. And Bo's jab is successful, but Holyfield's jab is successful when he's using his rhythm to disguise it. So we see them reset on the outside and in the process, Bo is approaching. And as he's approaching, Holyfield times uh, a double jab in between and within the bounces catches bow off guard there's some little subtle details first of all before they enter the exchange they're not technically in punching range at least bow probably is and now they're definitely in punching range but you see holyfield open that glove and maybe to to possibly catch a jab they may be coming out but it also serves as a feint because you can see bow reacts to it and then look at how they both enter the exchange defense first guard up such an underrated thing that they're not it's not just brawling it's educated brawling and it's in a skillful tactical brawling they're trying to damage each other but they're also trying to avoid damage at the same time i think that's the the sweet science right there trying to hurt somebody but also being responsible and this is in line with like the fight theories discussion videos i've been making about composure and experience but if you look at a lot of great fights you'll see that a lot of it's built upon how they react to each other's offense, defense, so on and so forth. But for example, let's take this just right here. When someone is trying to counter a jab and they get jabbed in the face, the jab actually lands. A lot of counters are built off of making the punch miss and then countering over underneath or around that miss. But people often get disrupted in the process of countering when they get hit with the punch that they're trying to get away from. So. Composure is greatly represented by Holyfield here because despite him looking to avoid the jab and then counter, he gets hit with the jab and still follows through with the counter. And now Bo gets grazed with the right hand and doesn't land super clean because he turns away from it. And in the process, he still counters. So both of them are getting touched. They're still, the, the, the shots is grazing by their head. The shots is touching them. They're getting caught off guard. But no matter what happens in the situation, they're going to follow through with their initial um, desire, the, the thing that they really wanted to uh, work with, the, whether it's a counter shot, the uppercut or the cross. They're not letting the offense of their opponent stop them, basically. Composure, right? Still sticking to what you, sticking to your guns. And as we mentioned that, this, this is an important moment because like I said, this is my first time watching the fight. So a lot of times I'm like, hmm, I wonder if this is gonna be important. And, and as I was watching this, my note was like, so obviously he gets jabbed in the face and again, composure responding to the jab. And then he leaps into like this left hook a little bit. I'm like, huh, I think that's gonna play into a pattern later on. And then it turns out as I kept watching the fight, it immediately started to set a pattern of him trying to time the jab and counter the jab with left hooks. In fact, if we go just one second later, look at how he responds to the next jab. So inside, no, that's the outside slip. Cause he switches up from inside to outside slips. So a little bit of a parry, but outside slip and then tries to launch the left hook around and it works. And now he's waiting for the jab. He's expecting the jab. So that makes counters even easier. Kind of a, a, a little bit of a parry right here. And this time he steps inside and then gets out of the way of Bo's left hook, at least throws off the trajectory with his position and he changes positions. Such an underrated little small move right here. When he throws the left hook, boom, look how he steps further inside, which gets him away from the potential left hook counter of Riddick Bo. And then a couple seconds later, they reset, Bo looks to jab. And again, if you're expecting the shot, it makes it way easier to counter. If you're just looking for that singular sing, singular shot, like a, a cross, if someone keeps throwing a cross over and over and 
you're it, it becomes way easier to predict and way easier to see because that's the only thing you're looking for he's he's looking for that jab riddick ball throws a jab perfect slip another inside slip and this time it goes to the body why well because he just went to the head a few times riddick Bo's glove guards his his chin so he digs it to the body and then Bo gets a little bit of, of control with that that left arm but evander's working on the inside we're going to talk about some inside work very soon one thing i left out is the danger with that the inside slip um and maybe this will play a role later on in the fight i don't know because i have to get there what happens if Riddick Bo feints the jab and then throws a cross or a four? Because Bo's gonna be on the inside lining himself up with the right shoulder of Bo. Uh, I said Bo. Holyfield's gonna be on the inside lining himself up with the right shoulder of Bo. Or if Bo just throws a one two, that could be bad for Holyfield. We'll see if that actually happens later on in the fight. Don't spoil it for me. This is one of my favorite moves in the fight so far. And I think it's one of the smoothest little tricks slash traps that Holyfield has. So they're on the inside and this was dictated by Holyfield. So Holyfield turned it into an inside fight and then he backs up and he resets the range. Now it's at the range that he wants it again. So he's dictating the range just subtly. So as he does that, obviously Bo is going to start closing in. So Bo has forward, forward momentum and Holyfield faints up top a little bit and crashes in. And in the process, so basically he pulled Bo in. He's controlling when and where the fight takes place in, in this particular instance. If he wants it to be inside fight, he closes in and Bo meets him there. And he pulls back, Bo meets him and he can meet Bo, catch him off guard a little bit. And what that allows him to do is, is frame on the guard a little bit with his shoulder, kind of pin it just a little bit. It's not a massive, crazy frame, but Bo is just leaning over because he's following Holyfield ducking because you see Bo is standing up, but when Holyfield goes low, he goes low with him. But as he's leaning over, wham, a crazy uppercut. Damn. Here's some subtle yet effective inside work from Bo. They're kind of wrestling on the inside, just arms tangled all over each other. But then you see Bo with his right glove and it's, it's hard to see from this angle, but it's subtle. You see that right glove slip in and peel away at the guard and you see that how Holyfield's guard gets pulled away and it leaves open and up the middle for the uppercut. Just sneaky little stuff from Bo. This little move right here. Right hand pulls left, comes through. And it's a tight, speaking of uppercuts, Holyfield's uppercut was great. And this is a great uppercut too. What you'll notice about this fight, especially compared to a lot of modern fights, not all modern fights, but most on the inside, there's not a lot of idle, meaningless time. It's a lot of vying for position, not clinching, but grappling. Even the way their heads are positioned, like you're about to see Bo position his head right here, pause. And in the process, he's going to push just a little bit, lean on him and create space, create room, enough room to set up, you know, shots that uh, allow him to open up. This uppercut is mostly blocked by the guard of Evander, although some of the force obviously gets through. And as, as he does, as he lands dash or partially lands, mostly misses that, whatever, as the force from that shot lands on Holyfield, the shot doesn't have to land, but the force from that shot brings Holyfield up and lines him up for a left, but Bo's accuracy is off. So Holyfield is uh, so far safe. But again, the range was reset by that little head nudge from Bo and the force of the uppercut pulling Holyfield up. And so now Bo has a lot of room to work because he has longer arms. It's harder for him to be tight and throw those shorter shots. So he has to make room. And uh, the, the little bit of a head nudge and the uppercut did both of those things. And then he's leaning back in and he has that left forearm pinning the guard in place. It's a slight pin in place to line up a, a grazing left uppercut. And then he pins again after he throws the uppercut. He doesn't return it to a high guard. He horizontally pins it across the guard. Again, holding it in place. And that's going to line up a what? A right hook around the body. That that may be a little bit of a kidney shot. Who knows? Who cares? It, there's some, there's some, you know, dirty moments in this fight, but it's a, this is a fight fight. We don't really care unless it's real egregious. So once he launches that again, he's making room. He's making room now, not with frames necessarily, but with his feet. Slight step back. 
wham into the uppercut. Now that one was a lot more effective than the one that started it. And of course, Holyfield, he's not just going to get work put on him. He's going to respond. So that's why he, he launching this left hook that mostly gets kind of crowded. I think the next part to this will come very soon, but before the next part to this comes out, I'm going to finish uh, Piotr Jan versus Corey Sanhagen. I may do another uh, part to the Roy Jones breakdown because I only did like 70 seconds worth of the actual fight. And there was almost nothing done in that time. It's just so much technical stuff. So yeah, those, pro those two things will probably come before the next part of this, but everything will be in order. And I'm probably gonna put my chin system, my, the way I judge chins, that'll come out soon too, essentially. And then Canelo fighting over the weekend. So it's a lot that's gonna be happening. Just stay tuned. Notification bell as always. Like if you feel like somebody needs to see this to learn about the science, then share it with them. That's all. Immortality Sarah Mount.